All right, gang, how you all doing? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to DanXG. We're going to talk all things Lego once again today. I did say that that was going to be the bulk of what was going to go on on the channel. Um, it is my biggest passion. It is the thing that I'm into. And I'm working on some really exciting projects where Lego is concerned as well. Um, I've been doing a bit of Lego shopping. I have picked up a new set. I'm going to talk about a set that I built a little while ago as well in today's video. I'm going to do like a very quick review on two brand new Harry Potter sets. They are the, the sets that came out in uh, the beginning of this month, I do believe. The beginning of the March they were released. I have two of the five or six that were released. We're going to talk about two of them today. I do have another set that I have picked up and built, um, but I'm going to make a video on that another day. Reason for that being, I think if I can keep the reviews to just Harry Potter stuff, it makes a little bit more sense with the context of the video. And I'm also, gang, going to show you a brand new look at the room because I've had a move around. There's Method to My Madness. Um, I have done it for a very, very good reason, especially where content is concerned going forward. But before we talk about that, before I show you the brand new look to the office, let's talk about the two Harry Potter sets I've been building. So let's talk about the Harry Potter sets that I have been buying and building and adding to my collection gang. Now I will apologize for the audio during this course of the video. I'm still having to use the mounted microphone, um, but now I've had a change in the office. I'm gonna be able to use a proper one from the next video going forward. So yeah, just got to suffer it for one more video, unfortunately. But anyway, let's talk about these Harry Potter sets. These, this is part of the uh, March 1st release. So this is the third iteration of Harry Potter set. Now I hadn't collected much Harry Potter stuff before this. Um, I have a few sets, just stuff I really like the look of, but I hadn't really um, concentrated on collecting the entirety of um, a range of sets until now. I'm gonna make a conscious effort to start collecting all the Harry Potter stuff. We're gonna talk about this one and another one from this third iteration of sets. And so the first set we're gonna talk about is that of set 76432, the Forbidden uh, Forest Magical Creatures set. I picked this up for $24.99 in Smith store, uh, Toy Store, and that is the going rate, the retail price at the moment. And I don't think that's gonna reduce anytime soon because as I've just said, these are the March uh, first releases. So they are still relatively new on the market. Now this set game, what can I say about it? It's a pretty cool looking set. I like the fact that you get a few things in it. I love the fact you get a baby festral, a hippogriff, uh, a Cornish Pixie, a bat, a glow-in-the-dark spider, I'll talk more about that in a moment, um, a brand new Hermione Granger minifig, so she is at this moment unique to this, se uh, to this set, and you get this um, Ron Weasley minifig as well that's been used in a couple of other sets before. I like that about it. I do also like, maybe not so much from an adult perspective because I'm not going to play with it, but I do also like the fact that each one of these pieces is modular. You build each one separately and then they all clip together and if I was actually to pull these two bits and come the other way you can even make a full circle for the set. I like that because for the kids this is a cool uh, play function in my opinion because if there's a few kids playing with the one set they can each have their own part and feel like they're all part of the story and all part of the game they might have going on. And I think that's kind of cool. And also, if you are to spin it round and turn it into a circle, that's kind of a cool piece for your kids to play with as well. I built this one with Emily. It's starting to become a bit of um, a running thing in this house now that after dinner, if there's any Lego laying about or if there's a brand new set that needs building that Emily might be able to help with, we sit and do it. And she really, really enjoyed this one. And that's where the glow in the dark thing comes. When she learned that parts of this glowed in the dark, obviously she ran to the light, turned it off and wanted to see. And the spider in particular really glows quite bright. My daughter's obsessed with anything creepy crawly. Might be a surprise to a lot of you, but she is. And she loves spiders and snails and all that sort of thing. And when she sees the spider glow in the dark, her little face lit up and I just thought it was a really cool function. The tops of the toadstools all light up as well, as well as Ron's lamp, which is a really, really nice touch um, because that's just a cool function because it is obviously something that would work that way. I think the hippogriff looks really, really cool. I really, really like this fig. like the baby festival as well, but my favorite of all the little items that you get is definitely the Cornish pixie. He's cheeky little face and they're a big fave of mine in the movies. I think from an adult perspective, it's maybe not 
the best one that we could ask for. I, I am gonna display it with the rest of my stuff, but I do think it is a little child looking, and you can definitely see that this was built to be played with rather than displayed. That all being said though, I still think there's some really, really cool things at work here. Love the fact that we got a few figs and a few items, and I think a few of these unique colored pieces as well could come in handy a little bit further down the line. All in all, a pretty good set, but definitely one for the kids. And then the next set we're gonna talk about is this one, gang. And I'm pretty sure, if memory serves correct, this is 76424, and it's the flying called Anglia. Again, part of this new third iteration of Harry Potter sets. I don't have the box, gang, because I actually bought this day of release. Because when I see this, and I see the price, I knew it was a must have in my, Lego collection, as well as my brand new Harry Potter collection that I'm gonna be starting. I think they've absolutely nailed the way this looks. I think they've nailed the characters you get. You get a Ron, you get a Harry. Both are brand new, and at this moment in time, unique to this very set. You get a little rat, so that represents Scabbers, and you also get Hedwig as well. I will just take Hedwig off. And then you get this car, which I think is picture perfect. I really, really do. The front, the back, the way it looks, I think they've absolutely nailed the brief. And this is one of my favorite movie vehicles. I love the film this is in. Uh, I love the scenes that are attached to this, this car. I absolutely love it. And Lego have nailed the way this looks. But not only have Lego nailed the way this looks, they've nailed the items that are inside, they've nailed the price. 12 pound and 99 English pence. I paid for this set, and I think that Lego could learn a thing or two from just that. We need more sets that are an affordable price, but the build is a robust item, something that's worthy to be displayed, or if you're a young'un, worthy for you to play with. There's a simple feature that this top comes off, the lads, the Hedwig and Scabbers can all get inside, so this can be played with by the kids, or in my um, instance, displayed on the side and look really, really cool and all for the grand price of $12.99. Lego need to learn a thing or two. We need more affordable sets that look great, play great, and are great. And I think they've nailed it with this one. Okay, gang, so I'm gonna give you a, a really, really quick tour of the new look Lego room, office, whatever you wanna call it. My wife has started calling it the Lego lab because I'm some mad Lego scientist who spends all his time up here basically messing around with building blocks. I don't mind that name. I'm gonna apologize for the little bit of mess, especially on the sofa, jumper and all sorts has just been thrown on there. And if you hear any weird like wind type noises or banging, the, the weather here in Blighty is crazy at the minute. It was beautiful this morning. And then this evening, it's been lashing it down with rain and we've got gale force winds. And uh, obviously this is just a timber built building. So when the wind rips off the roof, you really, really hear it. Um, but anyway, I did a little Lego room tour when I first started making content again. Um, that wall there, I used to have the TV against it with the cabinets either side. What I've done now is I've wanted to try to make this room uh, feel like it's in two parts. So that part over there is kind of like the TV station where I sit and I watch football, watch movies, because I wanted to make a little station like that because eventually I wouldn't mind doing some movies, like reviews and watch longs as well, like as part of the channel. Remember, this is this channel is mainly Lego, but it's all my hobbies and, and movies is a big one. Um, and also it doubles up not only as a TV area, but in these two cabinets that you can see, um, that's where all of my bricks are basically stored. Apart from some that I've put under the sofa, um, the majority of the stuff is stored in there. Now, when I'm picking bricks for Bricklinks orders, this now makes it a lot easier. I kind of got a workstation on the table, I've got all the tubs underneath, as you can see, and then all the parts are basically in those, so I can just open the drawers up, take the parts out, and it's making, made my life so much easier. I've already done a couple of Bricklinks orders, and picked picked uh, pieces for people and honestly it's a godsend i used to have to walk all over the place in here trying to find bits but i've basically now moved everything just integrated everything into the, these two cabinets so yeah it's really really cool i've kept some lego over here as you can see so we've got the series 25 in the middle um, i have now completed series 25 which is a good thing because series 26 
is coming out very, very soon, May 1st, and it's space themed to this time. So I'm really looking forward to that. We've got Groot over here. Um, we have um, the Lord of the Rings diorama. Um, as you can see, Marty McFly, he is back there. He's still there. And I've got this cute little Wooly. Now I was watching a little tutorial online. I hope that focuses and you can see that. It's only a few parts, but it's like a little micro Wooly, and I'm absolutely in love with it. Um, and then we've got over here, I thought it just seemed right to have the alien one side, the demigorgon the other for the little movie station. I have left the F1 car over here as well. Obviously I sit over here watching Formula One as well as other things. And now if I spin it around, you will now see that those cabinets are over this side gang. Um, I wanted to basically make a wall of Lego. I want to display all my Lego one side of the room. Eventually I'm gonna run out of room. I understand that, I know I am, because at the rate that I'm buying Lego at the moment, you will see down there, there's sets that have gotta be built. Um, I am gonna run out of room, which means the taller cabinets here, I am gonna get another one and put it in this space. It will fit. And then the wall that you see there, I'm gonna create some artwork to go on the wall, something Lego themed. Um, for those that don't know, I'm a graphic design and video editor. Um, that's what I do part-time for a living. So I think that I might be able to come up with something pretty cool to go on the wall. And then that will act as a backdrop because this space between the desk and the wall, I'm gonna get a little fold away table or I'm gonna make a little fold away table. And in future, that's what I'm gonna do the reviews on. I'm not entirely comfortable, you know, doing it on the coffee table or, you know, trying to mooch around and, and do reviews the way I am. Um, so I wanted to try and make it easier to kind of do those things. Um, as you can see, all the Star Wars stuff is over here. It's all just kind of been moved around. Um, I don't think there's any new additions. We've added the battle pack to the bottom, as you can see, and I have bought the um, the X-Wing down, so that's now on a proper shelf, next to the stub fighter. Um, and then, yeah, the tanks are up the top. One of those tanks has moved around ever slightly. Um, and yeah, and then I've moved, just moved Ray's um, a, a vehicle over here, just for now, because I'm not sure what's gonna go on that bottom shelf with the battle pack. As you can see down here, gang, I've got a bunch of stuff that needs building, and the majority of it is Star Wars. We've got this um, double pack, which is like a Mando fighter and whatnot. We've got a bunch of battle packs at the at the back there. I do have a uh, Star Wars GWP from um, last last times May fourth deal, and then the ones in the clear. Uh, boxes there are all old retired sets that I found in a bin that was donated to me so yeah I've got some really cool sets there to build um, as well as a Millennium Falcon which is in that big pot at the bottom there yes that is a Millennium Falcon the 2011 one because um, I got the majority of the figs for it as well so I've got to build that and then as you can see here I've got the Harry Potter stuff at the top as you can see uh, the stuff that we've reviewed today is already on the top there, um, and then underneath a few other parts. There is a build there, we'll talk about that in a future video as already mentioned. And I do just wanna show you, it's an Ant-Man in the wild. Yes, I think he's a little lost gang. But yeah, so I just wanted to move all of my bits and bobs over here, have a good move around. And the reason, the biggest reason for doing this is it's opened up a huge amount of room in the office. Not only does it make it easier for me with my Bricklink store, but this has now allowed me a space to be able to build a table that's about five foot by four foot, and that table will be at a nicer height than the coffee table. Initially, I was gonna get six base plates and build a miniature kind of Lego city on the coffee table, but instead now, I'm gonna build a, a desk probably a similar height to my desk that I work from, five foot by four foot, and that is what we are gonna build our modular city on, our mock city. It's gonna be really cool. 
obviously we're limited for space it isn't the biggest desk but it is what it is if the channel you know ends up being absolutely amazing we smash it out of the park maybe in future i'll be able to get a bigger space to be able to do things but for now we have to work with what we've got and this is what we've got i still think we're going to be able to create a lovely big table i'm going to build it myself i think i might uh, get my granddad to come over he's um he was a, he was a carpenter all his life might get him to come over help me build it so that i can have maybe fold away legs on it um so that when i need to put it away i can and if i'm building modular as well it means i'll be able to unclip each section of the city and it'll be able to be put away um, and i think that's the bi the biggest thing i needed i needed for the city to be to have this ability to be modular i think if i'd have done it on that coffee table one it wouldn't have been modular and two it would have just got in the way because i used the coffee table all the time for my brick links so yeah that is the plan going forward and that's the reason why i moved everything around and so there you go again we are done and dusted for another video i do hope you've enjoyed it um i've probably mentioned it during the course of today's uh little episode of my lego builds and whatever instagram discord uh, Bricklinks website all the links are in the description feel free to go and check them all out fill your boots with the content that I am um, you know making on those social sites and the community that we're building on the discord and also do drop a like on this video it's really appreciated it just helps the channel grow in this new direction I'm going and get involved in the comment section as well let me know what you'd like to see from the channel going forward as well if there's any particular lego projects lego sets that you'd like me to review or look at or even potentially look to buy and uh you know kind of um kind of build and whatever i've said it many a time there are going to be builds coming to the channel real real soon my office just wasn't set up for it but as you've seen it is now so going forward things will change ever so slightly where the content is concerned but i'm off skis See you later, gang.